Good morning, sunshine, because it is June in Sweden, and there is a lot of that. Today, maybe, uh, by contrast, uh, super negative, possibly mean, um, because of the interesting questions uh, I've received. Um, with any luck, the net is positive. Let us find out. First, we have a question from Alessio, which is, uh, I've had a really bad experience playing Vesson as player. It seems to me that, in, that it encourages practices like uh, breadcrumbing the players and illusionism. At least this is my impression after having played and read the handbook. Do you think that there could be a possible way to play Vesson in a functional way? Functional in quotes. I'm, I know what Alessio means. I'll elaborate that in a moment. Uh, that is, he says, a way that avoids the issues above. Adept play already has uh, a, a documentation of this exact issue, uh, both in terms of videos of play and also some extensive discussions. So some of what I say will pretty much just point toward those. Uh, the simple answer is yes. Uh, well, <laughs> the simple answer to the basic observation is yes. Uh, Vesson as a text uh, cannot, taken as it is, simply cannot uh, inspire or support play, which I regard as play, with the medium uh, in operation, events occurring via procedures and uh, outcomes and ultimately, you know, the fiction itself um, as a property of what we do in play. Um, it is, uh, it fails. It, it can't do it. And that's a pretty strong statement on my part. I mean, there are lots of games out there that we can point at for many of the same tendencies that you're talking about, uh, which I regard as playable, um, as that the text as such uh, maybe, you know, lumpy or scattered or have holes or something, but isn't antithetical to play. I will go so far as to say Vesson is antithetical to play. There are certain things that are familiar from a lot of texts. Uh, one is the complete disconnect between the setup for play and the concepts that are introduced both about the location and time of play, which is late 19th century Sweden, uh, which is presented in some a degree of very inspiring detail, uh, particularly in terms of social conflicts and the transformations of the industrial age. And the, the detail given to different regions and things like that, it's, it's basically, you know, a... a, a, a a suite of files delight toward that understanding and depiction. It also, uh, in terms of making the characters, provides a rather detailed and customizable meaning. Uh, there are details and specifications, and then there are choices embedded in here and there, which lead to making a reasonably compelling character, and often one that is at odds uh, with their own background or with other classes or in some ways bears the marks of these sociological you know, transformations that are going on. Um, again, all of which is actually rather exciting. You are, you are looking at this character and saying, let's move. I, I have places to go. I have you know, thoughts. I have uh, positions. Now, the whole thing is then... Uh, tacked, there is no other way to put it, it is tacked onto pro probably the most explicit, uh, you know, dinner theater walkthrough of a prepared mystery with an outcome that I have ever seen. And that is really saying something. You take one of those, you know, late 80s cult Clue supplements, which does that, um, and you will find that it is by comparison, wide open for uh, 
or for unpredictable play compared to this. Scripted play is an understatement. Uh, the, the essence of play is to uh, be walked through the arc of come together, investigate, you know, examine interesting artifacts that are present as physical props, as well as described, um, listen to uh, pre-stated uh, changes of scene um, with, with much purple prose, um, and then uh, experience the misunderstandings and the of uh, the minor revelations and the steps of what occurs, the things that you encounter but aren't in time to stop, um, the the uh, coded and um, and and even uncoded, just explicit. Okay, then now this happens, but not in the sense of a bang, which is that this is intrinsic to the situation and is going to happen uh, regardless. Um, but much more in the sense of this is how the plot, all the things that have occurred that we are supposed to have been playing, well, now, because of them, this happens. So, therefore, the things that were played up until that point have to be a specific way. And you include the player characters because they somehow, you know, they know a person in this particular, uh, this place, or you... Uh, I assume, give them lots of chances to, you know, be their character. However, there is no connection whatsoever between this activity, which has to do with some, you know, cross-social ranks society that's interested in the Vesson. Vesson, by the way, if you don't know, means entity, and is, in this case, referring to the, the mega spirits and legendary uh, beings that, um, you know, dot the, the Swedish landscape and coastscape. Um, and that uh, there is a, a, a weird interaction among industrialization, uh, conservative religion, and its transformations um, and the place of these entities in Swedish life. Now, all of this is very highfalutin and very, you know, full, seems like it's full of, you know, content. But the fact is, it's a wumpus hunt. Um, it is the standard thing. You receive a letter from someone who says, oh, please, please come help. The society, for some reason, somehow, or maybe you as this cell of the society, you know, kind of gather and go travel off to this spot and go check it out. Um, intrinsic to it is there there will be some sort of backstory which is ever so interesting and uh, some confusions that will be ever so um, you know dramatic to, to overcome and um, then there will be the moment when you find out the thing you know the, the NPC tells you or the the the, uh, the the particular bridge to the climactic moment is settled now that means that all of those things about those characters that you made, and incidentally, the stated relationship that they have to each other, which is also part of character creation, um, is, is basically by the by. I mean, you, you really didn't have to do that. Um, I could have been handed, you know, the parson with, you know, 10 numbers on it or something, and, and played, and everything that I did, making up this particular, you know, uh, you know, this particular reverend who, uh, you know, has, is an alcoholic and who uh, has a relationship with the Vesson because they actually protected the, the church's silver from being stolen and stuff like that. All of that's just gone. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, it's irrelevant in every imaginable way, except that, I mean, as a parson, I get to do a thing. There's, there's my parson powers. So, really, the, 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 the bait and switch is enormous. I mean, the cultural context, the depth of the character creation, the idea that these characters know each other, you know, due to crisscrossing social bounds because of the, they have different relations with these, these Vesson. Um, and yet somehow the, 
fraught. Either the Vesson can be conceived as threats or they might be conceived as friends. I mean, maybe we get back to our kind of Swedishness by embracing them, or maybe we you know, move ahead to the modern age in some positive way or whatever. None of that is addressed. You're just dealing with, you know, another, you know, Lovecraftian wumpus, uh, you know, in, in, in some sort of, uh, you know, pseudo historical um, drawing room uh, village, you know, setting. So it's, it's quite difficult to uh, to play, frankly. The game master is constantly in the case, in, in the position of, you know, herding cats, of, of trying to, you know, sort of corral everybody as a unit to investigate the thing they're supposed to investigate, you know, trying to get them in the mood by reading this poetry to them that, that is supposed to set the scenes and, um, and, and making sure, you know, that you clip along you, trippingly uh, through the, the mandated steps so that the adventure is experienced as it should be for anyone playing this adventure at this time. Now, is this limited to the published modules? No, it is, it's pervasive through the book. This entire concept is pervasive through the book. I've often talked about sharpying things that just simply don't work, that you, you read it and you're like, okay, you know, the aliens came in and stuck this, 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 and this in here. Um, this was a role-playing game at some point for someone having a good time, and then when they published it, the aliens came along and they stuck in all this weird shit about, you know, make sure that they feel this and take them through the story of that and all that crap. And um, you can just sharpie it out, right? And the, the game, you haven't done anything to the game itself. It's, it's fine. Um, this is different. You could, but the extent of sharpieing is... 80% of the text. I mean, you're basically, you know, torching an enormous amount of this, leaving behind a very small role-playing game that removes, you know, good... The, it's not even a matter of percentages. It removes the framework and context for play, leaving behind some mechanics and some organizational features. And those mechanics, organizational features, and everything I said about the setting and the characters is strong. There is an aspect of the mechanics that I actually quite like. There are several I think are quite ass, actually, but the uh, in the sense that you're rolling a lot to stay busy, particularly the notion that you uh, the, the dice don't matter. I mean, and it is explicit. The story must go on, says the text on the relevant page, and it is straightforwardly the case that you do not let dice outcomes ever interfere with the way the story is supposed to go. This clue must be found. This uh, particular revelation occurs at this time in the sequence of events. It just does. And the rolling is just keeping us all busy and providing you know some variables going up and down. So those are the things that are asked. Now, what about the part that I said that I liked? I really like the damage. The damage system is the one thing. We didn't really encounter it until late in play. And when we did, all of us were saying, well, shoot, we should have been doing this stuff from the beginning. Now we have, you know, meaty mechanics to actually play with and bounce off of, and we're in different conditions than we were before. The, the nominal textual conditions that you receive by failing rolls and stuff like that uh, are quite toothless in comparison. Um should I play this again, which, which would mean, you know, writing a role-playing game, um, the, the default conditions that one acquires would be much harder to throw off, or at least would persist without, you know, without fail for some time. Um, and then in that context, the penalties resulting, resulting in different kinds of uh, failures that would really damage you, um, there's some serious play at work there, really enjoyable play, particularly in terms of consequences to and for those very things that we invested in our characters in this culture. Uh, frankly, I'm not even sure we need Vesson. I mean, except as interesting entities that sort of fade in and out, but the whole concept of hunting them or investigating them or whatever, this society about it, I mean, 
what's that doing in there? I mean, it, it, it seems completely, uh, it's, not, it's not just extraneous, it is, it hijacks everything that's actually there to play. So this game, or rather this publication, is, in my opinion, a symptom of the general um, subornment of role-playing to commerce. Um, this goes actually back to the 80s and the nature of how role-playing came to Europe, but it is particularly the case now in kind of this haze of entrepreneurial you know, euphoria uh, that I observe locally. You know, we, it can't be crap. It, it's very expensive. I made a million dollars. It's amazing. This is you know, this context um, and the ability to dress it up. I mean, the illustrations in Bethlehem are world class, of course, by a world class artist, and one could could never criticize them in terms of quality. They're out, they're outstanding. They're more than outstanding. Um, so what? Really? So Alessio, yeah, uh, one could take Vesson and write a better or even a role-playing game. But that's what you'd have to do. Take a look at the discussion uh, between me and Jesse Bernecco in the, the Vesson posts. Um, I will uh, put a link to those into the text of this post, and you can see how this is ironed out in some detail by us. And I think you'll find it uh, very familiar, actually, given your experiences.